This is the first of two very basic tutorials to introduce us to a new node called a range mapper node. Highly versatile and very, very useful. I use them a lot in my work. In a previous tutorial, we learned how to take the rotation of cube A, divide it by two, and then pass it to cube B so that cube B would rotate at half the speed of cube A. In this tutorial, we're going to take the position Z of cube A and do exactly the same thing. We're going to divide that by 2 and then pass it to cube B so that cube B moves at half the speed of cube A and only covers half the distance. In order to do that, we're going to use our magical new node, the range mapper. So we'll come up to our tag here on cube A, double click on there and open the Expresso editor. And then, as per usual, we'll drag in both cubes and drop those in there. And then we'll set them up as need be and just do the usual thing. At Cubase output stage, I'm going to go to coordinates, position, position Z, and then I'm going to do exactly the same at the input stage of cube B. There we are, position Z. So now we can bring in our range mapper. So we'll go to new node, Expresso, down to calculate, and then range mapper. And there she is. Now if we look at the range mapper node, we can see that it has an input and an output port. And we are able to actually give it other ports if we want to, but we don't need to worry about these, we won't use them. We're just going to use the input and the output, and we'll wire the output of cube A into the input of the range mapper, and take the output of the range mapper and wire it into cube B's input. And that's the wiring taken care of. Finally, to make everything work properly, we need to set up the range mapper's parameters. As the range mapper's name suggests, it allows you to convert one range of numbers into another and by doing so, create ratios. So the first thing we need to do is set up the input stage. So if we come down to the parameters, you'll notice that we have an input lower and an input upper. Now the input lower is basically the cube A start position. So cube A, where it is over here, we've got its start position. So we can see that its position is minus 300 meters in the Z there. And if we come to our range mapper and go to our parameters down here, we're going to give our input lower a value of minus 300. And we're going to give the input upper a value of 300. So we're going to have our cube moving over a range of 600 units. I must say though that it's not restricted to that range at all. It can actually move in the z-axis below minus 300 or above 300. It's not that kind of restriction at all. Okay. So that's our input stage taken care of. What we now have to do is set up the output stage with a new range of numbers which can then be delivered to cube B. And for this, we need to put cube B's start position in the output lower, so we'll just click on it. And it's jumped to zero there, and the reason for that is because in the output lower at the moment, we actually have a zero. But we want that to be minus 300. And if we do that, and we just click there, it will jump back. And we want the output upper to be zero. So we want the cube to finish in basically the middle of the screen. So you can see that we've got a 600 unit range for cube A and a 300 unit range for cube B. So it's exactly half. So now if we just move this out of the way and select cube A, and we move it in the Z, cube B only moves half the distance and at half the speed. And that's that taken care of. Earlier I mentioned that cube A wasn't restricted in any way and that it could go above 300 and below minus 300. At the moment it's at 400. And it's also true that cube B isn't restricted in any way. Neither of them is constrained to their number range. However, if you want cube B to be restricted, you can actually do that. If we come up to the node properties here, we've got clamp lower and clamp upper. Now these refer to the output stage. They don't alter the fact that cube A can move beyond its range of minus 300 to 300. That's not restricted by this. It's the actual output stage that's restricted. So if we check these two boxes, and now if we move cube A below minus 300, we find that cube B actually stops dead at minus 300. Similarly, if we move cube A along here and we move it above 300, cube B comes to a standstill at zero. So that allows you to clamp the output stage. It stops cube B from moving beyond the actual output range that you've set. But cube A is allowed to continue on its sweet way. That's another little thing that you can do with it. There are other things, but I'm not going to go into those in this tutorial. That concludes our first look at the range mapper node.
and I hope it's given you an inkling as to how useful and how versatile a node this really is. In our next tutorial, we'll take things a little bit further and do something slightly different. I'll see you there soon.